Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching, accounting, economics, business and law through this channel. I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar challenge. So if anybody is not aware of this, this is a journey of an investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategic or compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades each and have a return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades. We do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a top rank number one rated buy stock, which is currently up over 164% in uh, the previous year and also up uh, in the green today. Uh, we're also going to be looking Looking at MMTLP and we're looking at two contradicting uh, answers here one from the SEC that says uh, there was going to be a squeeze and one from MMTLP that says there was not going to be a squeeze so uh, before we get started let's have a look at what's happening in the market so first of all headline here from Bloomberg we can see the stocks uh, today are retreating at, as ASM L and Nvidia are getting hit quite significantly so uh, we're going to look at ASM L shortly as well but from Yahoo Finance we can also see today that stocks did retreat from record highs uh, and with these declines we saw what happened with ASML so uh, if we have a look from CNBC we can see ASML shares fell 15% after the earnings released earlier than expected so this was not uh, according to uh, what they planned they stated that this was due to a technical error and information on the third quarter was down uh, erroneously published earlier because of an error on their website so it has cost them daily uh, but in more positive news from Apple Apple is currently at an all-time high earlier today at $237.26 and uh, good news we shared in the discord with regard to insider purchases one that we have been particularly looking at is Tixamal MRVL uh, Marvel Technologies and that one uh, right now today I believe is in excess of $80 start by sharing with you a new channel in the discord called top rank stocks dd and in this channel you'll be able to get uh, pdf reports for all top rated number one strong buy stocks so uh, these are three that we shared earlier and uh, in the previous video i also shared with you tixamil hims so go ahead and check that out so the three here first of all tixamil sn shark ninja currently up 149 percent on the year uh, the other one uh, we shared is um uh, tick symbol ANF, Abercrombie and Fitch Company. This is up 157% uh, on the year and uh, also Tenant Healthcare THC also up in excess of 195% over the previous year. And the stock I'd like to share with you today, uh, which is another stock um, that we're sharing DD report for, is tick symbol LE, also known as Lands N. This is another strong buy stock and it's expected to grow earnings by 346 0.7% in 2024. So this is a company that's a digital reseller of apparel, swimwear, outwear, accessories, footwear, home products, etc. And it op uh, operates through um, uh, Outfitters distribution channel. So uh, if we have a look at uh, in terms of the financials, obviously they reported for second quarter financial results and uh, they beat consensus by 80% um, revenue fell. However, it is expected to grow. Uh, the company has significant amount of cash and equivalents currently standing at around about $25.6 million. But um, what's also interesting about the stock is uh, in terms of the shares, 2024 is a good year, currently up 81% year to date. And we've just seen the previous 12 month figure, but if we have a look at the chart, uh, for LE over the previous 12 months, it's up a staggering 161.22%. Uh, and even today, I believe it's in the green. So let's have a look at what the analyst states. So all of them are giving this a strong buy rating. And uh, we can also see here um, in terms of the potential upside from the analyst, again, in, a, in excess of 6%. But I also believe this could go well in excess of $20. Now have a look at the update where we can see that the SEC and FINRA both seem to be disagreeing in terms of was there going to be a squeeze or was there not going to be a squeeze. So what Scott has post posted here is that FINRA wants no more motions files. They are claiming immunity and they are pretty much claimed that they are untouchable. So the SEC and uh, FINRA really need to get on the same page currently they do not seem to be uh, FINRA are arguing that there was no squeeze uh, and the SEC are saying in the case against John Berda and George Palacaros hell yes there was a squeeze and John Berda and Palacaros cooked it all up so who is 
telling the truth here and the truth only has one version there cannot be two versions of the truth so that's the angle that Scott is coming for, uh, from uh, but I'm going to share with you a very old post from Scott going back to 2023 where John Bird tagged him in, uh, in, a, in a quote here and where Scott stated that Ameritrade told him uh, 4 57 p.m eastern time with ron fleming that finra halted mmtlp when dark pools trade hit 800x normal value they nuked it with the u3 because the share price bore no resemblance to the actual value so scott has been around for quite a while uh, but he's just now becoming much much more aware uh, and that's mainly because of the statute of limitations so let's have a look at the his objection so in this here in the latest update we can see that scott's objection is to finra's motion to stay discovery and prevent future discovery motions so let's have a look at the key findings in this uh, and section one we can see that uh, he's referring to pslra which is known as a private securities litigation reform act and this is looking at the exceptions and these are preservation of evidence and undue prejudice so this provides an exception and discovery is necessary to preserve evidence to prevent undue prejudice to the party which obviously will be scott and everybody else who is a shareholder of mmtlp so section three finra risks evidence destruction and tailored discovery requests uh, discovery request is not overly broad or burdensome but is narrow ta narrowly tailored to preserve key evidence related to trading acti activities blue sheets and other electronic records now if we go back to my previous video we covered destruction of evidence or should we say loss of evidence from Schwab so we don't want that to happen with FINRA uh, and uh, in section 4 the SEC versus Birder now reference to this case and material sought by Scott have been provided by the FINRA and the SEC as of uh, the 5th of December 2022 obviously we've got the fire from with regard to Sam Andrade and in Birder and the SEC case uh, we, where there is another uh, claim against obviously Berda and um, George Palacaros. Uh, the quotation here is they were relying, the evidence, relying on evidence that there was a short squeeze to occur on, in MMTLP uh, and Berda orchestrated it with a variety of stock sales. So that's the allegation. The document is replete with statistical and trading data that the SEC is relying on as it pursues a civil action against Berda and Palikara. So what basically Scott is saying here is, well, if the SEC can use this evidence in uh, to, to go after George and um, John, why can't you know we uh, as retail investors such as Scott use the same evidence to go after FINRA? So it looks like uh, double standards here. So that's a very, very strong argument. Uh, so should the SEC prove a squeeze existed, then FINRA's position in Scott evaporates. So that's the contradiction that Scott is highlighting the SEC will have to prove evidence of short positions in torch and then we're carried over into MMTLP with the FINRA UPC committee halting halting trading because of a potential short squeeze so um, let's have a look at the subsection three the SEC repeatedly denied uh, requests for uh, the Draddy emails and the blue sheets and stands to reason that they have got something to hide and FINRA dismissed as a fantasy that MMTLP was halted because of a potential short squeeze was going to rip the rear ends of GTS, Schwab, Fidelity, Robinhood, Mellon Bank and many, many other broker dealers who had shorted MMTLP. So the entirety of the SEC case against Berda and Palacoros is that a short squeeze was being orchestrated by both of them. And FINRA, but FINRA argued that there was no short squeeze. So who is telling the truth here? We don't know. Number seven, uh, FINRA's size, budget and resources is a significant demonstration of power. So they are one of the largest and most powerful SROs in the financial industry. And work by using that title SRO, they also claim to have its immunity. So in section seven, the scope of Scott's request compared to FINRA's own demands. So Scott is just asking them in this case for a small number of blue sheets, 20 emails roughly, which is a mere fraction of what FINRA routinely require their firms to provide. So uh, is it, it is unreasonable for FINRA to argue that they are unduly burdened, which is what one of their responses in previous cases. And number eight, the argument is that FINRA is not unduly burdened by discovery requests. So uh, that's not uh, really, I think it, that is a quite pathetic argument from FINRA and section 11. Uh, FINRA personnel knew if the blue sheets are released, some of them are going to need criminal defence law. So huge, huge 
uh, statement here and get, again uh, significant for the people at FINRA because it puts them at significant risk. So January of 2025 there will be multiple criminal investigations into FINRA's activities and not just an MMTLP. So this is Scott's opinion. He's saying the blue shits will clearly show insider trading, fraud, conspiracy on a scale uh, that would make Bernie Madoff brush for its size, scope and audacity. So again, uh, certainly possible there. And at the end, we can see here that uh, in, at the signatures, Finner's needs to be shut down and its employees can find gainful employment elsewhere, uh, maybe at the SEC. And uh, therefore, Scott requests that the court deny Finner's motion, approve Scott's motion for preservation order, and motion for expedited limited discovery and any other relief that the court sees fit. So let's see how the judge uh, responds to this. And one of the posts I'd like to share with you again uh, from from a potential argument against Finra, then maybe could Scott you could use this as well. Uh, and that is a shout out here to uh, Pope Mickey American, who stated text search the document for in FINRA incorrectly classified MMTLP, blamed it on a system issue. They ordered or created the system, so morally speaking, they have a liability. So this is a material fact that impacted his decisions, probably everybody else's decisions. So we have a significant admission here by FINRA that there was um, a computer error. Finally, thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned.